Before we even knew what they were, mankind has been fascinated with the stars. There is not a man alive who has not, at some point, looked up to the night sky and wondered, are we really alone? Although we may never know the answer in our lifetimes, or perhaps because we may never know the answer, Hollywood has long been fascinated with the question. And over the years, numerous movies have presented many different versions of what visitors from another planet might look like. Sometimes friendly. And sometimes not. But each new iteration of E.T. doesn't just spring up out of nowhere. As with any Hollywood construct, the writers acquire inspiration. And since we don't actually know what aliens look like or how they'd act, the writers for these movies are forced to draw their inspiration from the world around us. It is this tiny fact that allows us to use Hollywood's portrayal of aliens as a glimpse into America's cultural psyche. Take, for example, the 1956 movie Invasion of the Body Snatchers. In this classic film, a local doctor encounters a rash of patients accusing their loved ones of being imposters. As it turns out, the townspeople are in fact being replaced by perfect physical duplicates grown from plant-like alien pods in an attempt to overtake the Earth. With the film being released in the middle of the second Red Scare, it has long been viewed as a metaphor for McCarthyism. People turning into characterless doubles when they fall asleep represents the dangers America faced by turning a blind eye to communism. Ironically, the film's lead actor is Kevin McCarthy. No relation to Joe. But in his autobiography, I Thought We Were Making Movies, Not History, producer Walter Mirisch said, People began to read meanings into pictures that were never intended. From personal knowledge, none of us saw it as anything other than a thriller, pure and simple. Whether it was intended or not, there's no denying that body snatchers can be easily interpreted as a metaphor for the Red Scare. And, just to hammer home the point, in a famous scene towards the end of the movie, McCarthy looks directly into the camera and delivers this line. Everyone! They're here already! Join me! While the Body Snatchers Red Scare correlation could be nothing more than coincidence, the historical significance of the day the Earth stood still is hard to debate. This 1951 sci-fi classic is about a humanoid alien named Klaatu, who has come to Earth to deliver a warning. Humans must change their ways, or our own actions will destroy the planet. At the time the film was released, the planet was still reeling from the effects of World War II. The bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were fresh in people's minds, and the whole world was living in fear that an atomic bomb could be dropped on them at any moment. So it comes as little surprise when Klaatu explains that our safety is threatened by our own atomic weaponry. So long as you were limited to fighting among yourselves with your primitive tanks and aircraft, we were unconcerned. But soon, one of your nations will apply atomic energy to spaceships. That will create a threat to the peace and security of other planets. In 2008, The Day the Earth Stood Still was remade, with Keanu Reeves in the lead role. Interestingly, Klaatu's entire message changes in the remake. It is no longer our atomic or nuclear power that poses a threat to the Earth. Our very existence is causing the Earth to die. If the Earth dies, you die. If the human race dies, the Earth survives. This drastic shift in morals from the original film to the remake is clear evidence of the role society plays in influencing movies. As times change, so do our attitudes. We are no longer scared of being bombed. Instead, the pressing issue in recent years is the role we're playing on our precious planet. Never has this been more relevant than in James Cameron's 2009 epic Avatar. The entire film is an allegory for environmentalism, from the nature-worshipping locals to the profit-driven antagonists. And interestingly, the traditional roles are reversed in this film. The humans are the invaders, while the aliens are the good guys. While society obviously plays a role in any genre of film, extraterrestrials offer filmmakers a way to make a statement while avoiding political minefields. And when you really take a close look at it, it becomes blatantly obvious that a lot of movie aliens were actually based off of humans and our social norms. In Independence Day, the aliens were just as baffled by this newfangled computer virus technology as we were. E.T. rebelled against an overly hostile government. And in Mars Attacks, the Martians had one thing in common with a lot of humans. They really, really hated Yodeling.